What's going on guys? In a previous video I made, I was asked a lot about how do I actually structure the fulfillment of my agency. So if you don't know me, my name is Matt and I have an automation agency that we help businesses automate their process, right? So that could look like so many different things and we work with multiple different industries. So it's different for each industry, um, which is not a great advice because the first point that I'm going to go with is create your offer first. Now, this is about fulfillment and it is about the back end. So I just need to get this part out of the way first. Your offer really does dictate what your fulfillment is gonna be. So before you even get started with automating things and jumping in, look at what you're selling to people. So you need to have a really good idea of what you can actually accomplish with your automations. Because if you go to a business and you say, hey, my name's Matt and I can automate your business, they're gonna be like, I don't understand. I'm like, what, what, what are you trying to achieve? So look at different parts of a business that, that you can generate an ROI in via automating. So if that's sales and marketing, looking at automating lead follow-up, right? If it's a high volume client business, so like a, a trainer or an online coach, how can you streamline their onboarding process and, and make that your service? If you are a restaurant or a cafe that gets a lot of inquiries online, how can you use ManyChat or something like that to communicate and, and book appointments or, or book reservations for different um, establishments, right? So knowing what you sell and what problem you solve for people will allow you to improve your fulfillment and get more dialed in. So with that, I just wanna add, if you, if, if you do have a, an offer, make sure you have a hefty guarantee because people are still a little bit skeptical about automation uh, and just builds a bit of trust and breaks down a barrier. What tools do you need in your agency? Now, this is gonna have my bias on it, so I'm gonna be favoring the products that I use, obviously. However, I'm going to add some caveats in there and kind of what you need to get started. Let's start with the gold standard, which is Zapier. Zapier is a fantastic tool for a beginner to use to automate their business, right? It is super user-friendly, any one can do it and it makes you feel like a little bit of a fraud sometimes of how easy it is especially if you're charging the pros of zapier is how easy it is to pick it up and start using it and not have to worry about learning anything crazy in depth and it is quite well known and there's a lot of documentation on errors and stuff like that if you get stuck the cons of zapier is it's expensive so when it comes to zapier like in australia i'm paying for the professional plan i think i'm paying like 120 aud a month which in the, in the cost of, of tools is, is still on the cheaper side, but it is still expensive for what it is. So if, if cost is a factor and you're starting up lean, then it may not be the best option for you. Definitely do not need it if you are starting an automation agency. An alternative, a bit cheaper to Zapier is Make. Now I don't personally use Make too much. However, it does have a lot more compatibility with like custom API requests and stuff like that. It, it, but it does have a bit of a higher learning gap. So you, it takes a bit more time to get a bit more familiar with the program. Now, one application I really want to mention here that if you want to get started as quickly as possible, as cheaply as possible, uh, you need to look at Pably Connect. Now, Pably is a small company, um, I think, in terms of <laughs> in perspective to someone like Zapier, but they offer a yearly cost, which I think is about 220 USD, where they run that promotion for the most, most part of the year, where it is pretty much the exact same as Zapier and has a lot of functionality that Zapier does. You you will be able to use this to automate your clients uh, business and the process that you're doing. 90% of the stuff that you can do in Zapier, you can do in Pabli. So have a look at there, I'm not affiliated with them, but I do, I, I use it personally for some of my clients and it is a lot cheaper. And if there's a way for me to port all of my stuff across to Pabli, then I will probably do that because it is gonna save me money. And then there's the behemoth. Go High Level. <laughs> Go High Level is an agency software that can be used to automate a bunch of tasks and also brings a lot of different softwares like Zapier, Calendly, Twilio, all into one. Uh, MailChimp, Active Campaign, all into one place. It is the juggernaut, right? It is what I run most of my agency out of, especially as I'm transitioning away just purely from automation and I'm focusing more on the problem I'm solving. So like sales and marketing. Go High Level allows me to do it in such a more streamlined way. So if you are looking at starting an automation agency or a, a SaaS um, agency or an SMMA agency, however you want to look at it. Go High Level is probably going to be what you need. Now, the issue with Go High Level, if you are on selling it to your clients, it is going to become expensive. So I pay roughly 730 AUD per month for Go High Level, which right now is super expensive. And you really want to make sure that you have clients paying you monthly to absorb that cost. So if you haven't already got clients 
and you are struggling to like pay to live, I wouldn't recommend going out and signing up to GHL right now. I would in fact get some clients first with some service, whatever service you're providing, even if it's you selling GHL and then you going back and, and, and purchasing the account, then I would suggest doing it. But what is best practice for all of these tools? As a caveat, go high level, literally you're the admin of it and you can divvy out accounts as, as you please. So you don't really have to worry about passwords and all of that kind of thing. So I'm going to leave GHL out of this for the for the time being, but all of the other platforms that I mentioned, any of the automation platforms, there is a very common question I get asked, which is, do you run all of your clients things through your account or do you get them to create their own and just, just manage it for them? The best practice here is for someone to create their own. So a client to create their own. Now, the reason that is, if, if you ever leave and that client wants to finish up with your business. I don't think it's ethical to have a chokehold over the work that you've done for them unless that's written into your contract. So I would always suggest setting up a an account for them. Now, I'm not 100% sure of the terms of service of Zapier running other people's stuff through it as well. There may be something in there as well, but it is always better to set up a client's account for them. Now, you're going to encounter issues with this because if you set it up with their email that they've already they, they already used and they gave to you, it's going to enable two-factor authentication on most applications and you're going to be bottlenecked every time you go to log in, you need to get approval from them to log into the account. The way that I have got around this in the past is that when you are setting up a client fresh and they haven't got any accounts and they haven't got any uh, profiles created on any of these applications, I would actually say to them, hey, a part of this is we're going to need an admin for all of your softwares. Can we please create an email address admin at blah, 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 so that I can log in and I can set up the two-factor authentication on, on your behalf. And they 100% say yes, because it's going to save them time going back and forth with messages. And this has mitigated a bunch of problems. So the way that I would do it is set up the email account first, then set up the platforms that you're going to use, and then once the client has been set up and established, they can get access to that as well. So they can jump on the platforms too. And then if you ever leave, you just hand over the access to the email account and then they can continue on using the, the automations that you built. Now with this, obviously you're gonna be running the cost of the platform through the client. You just need to build that into your service and, and list it off as a line item. So if you have a pitch that your service is $2,000 and then the cost of the platform is going to be $100 a month. You just need to tell them that the first month is going to be $2,100. And then every month after that, they're just paying the um, the, the fees to uh, Zapier or, or whatever it is, because you can't really get around that. And you don't want to be absorbing that cost for the client unless you're charging a retainer and then you pay for it off your own, own chip. So say, for example, if you do have a retainer on the client, say you're, um, you charge them $500 a month just to make sure nothing breaks. And then you say, don't worry, I'll pay for the Zapier subscription as well. Then you're like that $500, you're really making 400 and whatever. And provided you have low fulfillment margins, then you're still going to be um, net positive. And finally, the last question I've been asked is how to manage client profiles. So imagine you've got 10 of what I just said. So 10 people's uh, accounts that you've had set up and how do you manage them in terms of the browser? How do you manage, make sure you're not signed in on the wrong person? There's a couple of ways you can do this. I still haven't found the, the most perfect solution for this outside of just making sure that those clients, I, I set up a new profile in Google. Now I, the maximum I've found is you can only get to 10. Setting up a new profile for each person, but also having, I, I use LastPass. Uh, in LastPass, it allows you to create folders where you can put all of your clients' login details and segment them away from everyone else. So when you need to log into knock on stuff, you can go find the knock on LastPass folder and log in specifically for there. Then you can start using incognito windows. So it refreshes every single time you leave and you just log in one time. And because you don't have the issue of two factor authentication, it doesn't kick you out. There is an alternative of using something like ghost browser. Now these browsers that allow you to have separate sessions in between the two, um, none of them for me work well on a Mac. So I don't really use them and it ends up just being more confusing. And it, especially if I'm trying to jump between clients, my, my focus is shifted and I should really just be focusing on one thing at a time anyway. So I stop going incognito, open up my last pass folder and put that information 
in as I go. That is my guide to running your agency. Now, there's a lot more that I can cover in this. So if you have any more specific questions, please let me know in the comments below. And hopefully I can make a video and help you guys out more. If you did want access to my free automation agency course, that's in the description as well. In that you get access to my Discord. Uh, it's brand new, it's fresh. There's like two people in it. But if you jump in there, I'm putting a summary of every day uh, that I, I work and you'll be able to see an insight on what I'm doing in my agency, what's working, what's not. It will be super beneficial and you can ask questions too. All right, peace.